So when people practicing tongues and, and uh, prophecy now is more for personal comfort. Uh. I say something to comfort you. Uh. It will not be a teaching. Uh. Only the Bible can form a teaching. Agree? Yeah. But in Paul's time, not, not like that, you know. Paul's time only got Old Testament. Only. Uh. Even uh, what Paul said, uh, sometimes he also qualified. Uh. He said, I say this is from the Lord. Uh, but other things is for myself. <laughs> Remember not? <laughs> sometimes it's quite confusing. Uh. He said, I tell you this uh, is from the Lord. So you better listen. But I tell you this is my... Uh, what I think. Yeah. So we must know the context. Uh. Yeah, the context. Do you sit here so fast? Remember one time, uh, this prophet came to talk to Paul, no? the Akabas. Uh, don't go. <laughs> don't go to Jerusalem. Paul was an apostle, you know. He higher rank than the prophet. <laughs> he still go. <laughs> so they say, uh, apostle higher than prophet. In the Old Testament, uh, Moses higher than the prophet. Hmm. Uh, so because of that, he didn't, didn't listen to him. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> What what he did, said? Did Agabus uh, say yeah. don't go? Uh? Did, uh, did Agabus say don't go? Agabus yeah. only said if you go, uh, you'll be bound like this, like this, like this. But he didn't say don't go. It's uh, the others around him said don't go. I think he implied. Uh, he implied. Uh. Uh, but he's, he's telling him that this is what you're going to face when you go to Jerusalem. But he didn't say you don't go. Uh. <laughs> well, uh, what, what the apostles written uh, became the scripture? Rather than the prophet, uh, the New, Test New Testament prophet. Yeah. Why Yong? Why Yong? He does speak speak tongue, no? Yes. Agree, ah? Yes, yes. Many years already. He shared also. He shared also. Yeah. But I, I, we know many years ago, uh, he also revealed uh, privately that uh, he, he just speak in tongues. Your, your uh, favorite British author. Reverend Jayakuma also? Huh? Uh, Cody, sorry, you're saying so. No, no, I think Pastor's favorite British author. What's his name? Anti <laughs> Rai. Ah, uh, NT right. NT right also says he speaks in tongues. Hi, Siva. Hey, no. <laughs> <laughs> I suddenly see you. Big oh. screen. Big <laughs> screen. Wow, big boss. <laughs> Siva, big boss. Yeah. His chair very comfortable. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I was looking, looking. Suddenly, I saw Siva. Wow, so nice. <laughs> Massage chair. <laughs> oh, massage chair. Wow, well, red color. Oh. <laughs> Very attractive. My life. How are you? Okay. Good. Because raining. Ah, uh, my. Tumbling around. Yes. Yes. Hi, Gambling. Hi. <laughs> She's going to read our words. Ah. I think Dr. Lee can start. Okay. So, are you all, all ready? Huh? We're going to start. Yeah. Okay, yes. now we want to welcome all of you to our Zoom service. Uh, in spite of the lockdown, I think makes no difference. Right? We can still have a Zoom service. So, so glad to see all of you. Uh, we trust that you are keeping safe. So, we will now start the service by uh, the call to worship and opening prayer. Uh, Brother Tiam Hock, over to you.
Okay. Uh, uh, let us prepare our hearts to worship God. Not call to worship. Taken from Psalm 108, verses 1, 2, 3. My heart is steadfast, O God. I, I will sing and make music with all my soul. Awake, harp and light. I will awaken the dawn. I will praise you, O Lord, among the nations. I will sing of you among the peoples. For great is your love, higher than the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the skies. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens, and let your glory be over all the earth. Let us now pray together the opening prayer. Righteous and ever faithful God, speed your compassion to our sight, for we are brought low in our need. We come to you in this time of worship, for our spirits are poured out like water, and there is no one to heal our pain. Do not remain unmoved when the scoffers say, Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Help us, O God of our salvation, and come speedily to us once more, that all may see your glory and know where our true, heart, true help lies. Amen. So now we will continue with the uh, praise and worship. Huh? A very good evening, brothers and sisters in Christ and friends. We thank God that we can worship Him through Zoom and also YouTube. So for all of us who are at Zoom, and also following YouTube, Shalom and the presence of the Lord be with us as we worship Him. You now we talk very much about the new normal, but we only know a lot about the SOPs that we have to follow. There's a lot about the new normal, what lies in the future that we do not know and are not certain of. But in Christ, in the Lord, in our Lord Jesus, there's one thing for certain. We have hope and we are secure in Him. As we sing these two songs, let us believe that because Jesus lives and because He's our Savior, we do not fear the future and we have hope. And whatever trials that we may face, we can say, It is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. Send his son, they call him Jesus. He came to love, he lands for him, he live and die to buy my pardon. An empty grave is there to prove. My Savior is because He lives. I can face tomorrow because He lives. All fear is gone because I. Oh, 
feelings And then one day I'll cross the river I'll fight life's final war with pain And then as day gives way to victory I'll see the light of glory and I'll know He lives Because He lives I can face tomorrow Because He lives All fear is gone Because I Satan should buffer, though trials should come. Let this blessed assurance control. 
that Christ has regarded my helpless estate and has shed his own blood for my soul. And therefore, it is well, it is well with my soul. Praise the Lord and thank you, Jesus. In you, we will be well. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. So next, we will have the uh, intercession, uh, prayer intercession. Let's go to God in prayer. Praying for the political rank. We pray for our nation, Malaysia. God, give us a nation whose people will be discerning, honest, and righteous who know how to weigh right from wrong, not easily duped by political and other forms of deceptions. We pray for spiritual breakthroughs in the present political strife and impasse, and economic uncertainty that the reality of thy kingdom come will be fully felt in this beloved nation of ours. Help us not to feel embittered, defeated and apathetic or only look to political solution, but to look to you, O oh God, to deliver us from evil men, for you have said, vengeance is mine. We thank you for our Prime Minister and his cabinet as they demonstrate having a heart for the people, especially during this time when many are suffering under the strain of the pandemic and economic turmoil. We continue to lift up the health of our Prime Minister Muhyiddin Yassin into your keeping hands. We humbly ask for your blessing of guidance and wisdom as the Prime Minister and his cabinet work towards restoring the economy and prosperity of this nation. We would ask that a powerful continuing work of the Holy Spirit be upon this cabinet to bring about cleansed hearts, sincere motives, good conscience and empowerment to generally serve the riot with integrity of heart and effective competency. We pray that our minister will discharge their duties and, and responsibilities in the fear of the Lord. We ask for the demolishing of strongholds in the unseen realm of demonic activities, secret plotting and witchcraft. We ask that the intensifying efforts of all evil principalities and powers in stirring and stroking disunity, corruption and deception and plotting unholy alliances will trample and deceit in fear of your name. We pray all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praying for Sabah. Lord God, we pray for the people of Sabah that you will bless them with a good state government. As they seem to be heading for their state elections on September 26, 2020, we ask that men and women of integrity be raised up in this state election who have a genuine heart to serve the people. We ask for wisdom for the people to know whom to work for and not be served by enticement of money or fear. We ask that you will strengthen the church of Saba, that they may be united and boldly proclaim your word of hope and peace. Revive your church of Saba, O Lord. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praying to remove the pandemic and evil of racism and prejudice. O God, please remove from us the evils of apathy, racism, prejudice, and hate that must not find a home in our hearts. Stir in our hearts a deep compassion for those who have suffered during this pandemic from loss of jobs, business losses, and salary cuts, and those who are struggling desperately to make ends meet. Please comfort those whose family has been touched by death during this time. We ask that you surround them with love, generosity, and essential provision. Cleanse us, O Lord, and remove us from resistance and blockages to your work of grace that hide in the corners of our souls and minds. Praying for a move of the Holy Spirit.
fill us with the Holy Spirit, that we may walk in newness of purpose and mission of your glory. May we be, may we be your mouth, your hands, and your feet in bringing truth, justice, and righteousness to those who are oppressed, displaced, and in material need. Help us to get out of our comfort zone and offer compassionate and practical help together with our prayers. As we seek not to give, to grieve or squench the Holy Spirit, use us, O Lord, to prosper the nation. Breathe in us and revive us a greater bonus to proclaim your word. We ask that you will remove all hindrances that prevent us from speaking to those who need to hear the gospel so that they may be saved. As we await your return, O Lord Jesus, we pray that you will use us as a blessing to Malaysia. In your mercy, heal our land. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Yes, amen. So we want to warmly welcome all of you once again to our worship, the Zoom, as well as those on YouTube. Huh? We want to truly welcome you and we are glad that you are here with us. We trust that the Lord will bless you as we worship together. So allow me to bring, to highlight some of the, uh, sorry, we will go to the scripture uh, memory verses first. Huh? So this is our last one, assurance of salvation. Okay, taken from 1 John, let's recite together. Huh? 1 John chapter 5, verse 13. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. 1 John 5, 13. The second verse is taken from John 5, 24. I tell you the truth. Whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not be condemned. He has crossed over from death to life. John 5, 24. So allow me now to uh, highlight some of the church uh, family news. So if you or your loved ones uh, would like us to pray for you, you can contact our, either our pastor, myself, Brother Kuei, Tipeng, or any care group leader. We would uh, love to pray for you and with you. So let's continue to worship our God through our gifts and our tithes. You can do that by uh, online transfer. And uh, our bank is CMIB Bank, Wesley Methodist Church, account number 800 600 47276. After you have made the uh, transfer, you can then uh, email or WhatsApp transfer slip to Miss Bob. State your name and purpose of offering. But for those of you who can't do this, uh, continue to keep aside the uh, offering and our pledges and uh, bring them as we will soon, uh, uh, in God's timing, uh, we will soon reopen. So our church uh, worship service through Zoom and YouTube on Saturday will be the Chinese service through YouTube at 8 p.m. as usual. And at 8 p.m. on Sunday, our English service continues uh, through Zoom and YouTube as we are still under uh, EMCO. Huh? So a reminder to all uh, LCC members, Second local conference will be on 23rd of September, this coming Wednesday at 8 p.m. And we'll be doing it through Zoom. So uh, remember to uh, log in. I believe the link will be sent to us uh, in due time. So in this time of uh, TMCO, we believe that uh, we continue to pray and uh, that all of you will stay safe. So we are encouraged not to go anywhere unless it's necessary. So stay safe at home and stay connected to God and also stay connected to one another. And we encourage all of you to continue to join the CG, all the different CGs that are available. Even though you may not be in any CG, I think we will strongly encourage you to join one so that you can uh, continue to have fellowship uh, with one another through God's word. and. Uh, through prayer and uh, support for one another. So now we will have the scripture reading. Our sister Kam Ling. Good evening. Good evening. 
Today's scripture reading is taken from 2 Samuel chapter 5, verses 1 to 10, and 1 Chronicles chapter 11, verses 1 to 9. Let us read God's word together. All the tribes of Israel came to David at Hebron and said, We are your own flesh and blood. In the past, while Saul was king over us, you were the one who led Israel on their military campaigns. And the Lord said to you, You will shepherd my people Israel, and you will become their ruler. When all the leaders of Israel had come to King David at Hebron, the king made a covenant with them at Hebron before the Lord, and they anointed David king over Israel. David was 30 years old when he became king, and he reigned 40 years. In Hebron, he reigned over Judah seven years and six months, and in Jerusalem, he reigned over all Israel and Judah 33 years. The king and his men marched to Jerusalem to attack the Jebusites who lived there. The Jebusites said to David, you will not get in here. Even the blind and the lame can ward you off. They thought, David cannot get in here. Nevertheless, David captured the fortress of Zion, which is the city of David. On that day, David had said, anyone who conquers the Jebusites will have to use the water shaft to reach those lame and blind who are David's enemies. That is why they say the blind and lame will not enter the palace. David then took up residence in the fortress and called the city of David and called it the city of David. He built up the area around it from the terraces inward. And he became more and more powerful because the Lord God Almighty was with him. First Chronicles chapter 11 verses 1 to 9. All Israel came together to David at Hebron and said, We are your own flesh and blood. In the past, even when Saul was king, you were the one who led Israel on their military campaigns. And the Lord your God said to you, you will shepherd my people Israel and you will become their ruler. When all the elders of Israel had come to King David at Hebron, he made a covenant with them at Hebron before the Lord. And they anointed David king over Israel, as the Lord had promised through Samuel. David and all the Israelites marched to Jerusalem, that is Jabus. The Jebusites who lived there said to David, You will not get in here. Nevertheless, David captured the fortress of Zion, which is the city of David. David had said, whoever leads the attack on the Jebusites will become commander in chief. Joab, son of Zeria, went up first, so he received the command. David then took up residence in the fortress, and so it was called the city of David. He built up the city around it, from the terraces to the surrounding wall, which Joab restored the rest, while Joab restored the rest of the city. And David became more and more powerful because the Lord Almighty was with him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So this evening, we are privileged to have Dr. Choi uh, sharing God's word with us. Huh? So he'll be sharing... Uh, from the uh, passage just uh, read to us, knowing Christ through David. Huh? And uh, he also has uh, prepared a sermon outline. I think it's sent out to all of us through the uh, WhatsApp broadcast. You can follow the sermon through the, with the uh, uh, outline, sermon outline given. Huh? Okay. Good evening, brothers and sisters in Christ. We thank God that we are able to meet again this uh, evening and let us commit this time to God. Heavenly Father, Father, we thank you for this time we can meet again together and we thank you for the narrative of King David that it is not only historical but it is both spiritual and prophetic. And there are lessons for us to learn from it. But we want to thank you again for this narrative. 
and now may the words of my mouth and the meditation on my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my Lord, my Rock and my Saviour. In Jesus Christ, pray. Amen. So for this evening, the title of my message is Knowing Christ Through David, taken from Scripture text 2 Samuel 5, 1 to 9 and 1 Chronicles 11, 1 to 9. And both these are parallel passages which give us the narrative of King David being anointed king over whole of Israel and his subsequent conquest of Jerusalem. 2 Samuel 5, chapter 1 to 9 marks a new chapter and a turning point for David. It also fulfills the divine destiny for David. Rise of David concluded, reign of David begins. As we know, he was the youngest of Jesse's eight sons. Joseph, anointed future king of God's people. In his adolescence, slain Goliath in battle. Musician in Saul's court, fugitive in wilderness hiding from Saul, leader of the gorilla band in Ziklag, king of the tribe of Judah only. And now marks the turning point of his life. Eugene Peterson, in his book, Leap over a wall had this to say about the David narrative. As you know, Eugene Peterson is the author of the message. David, Christ and us. Eugene Peterson says, The David story is a major means of providing us a narrative for understanding our lives with all its complexities as God shaped it. It is a story that comes into its final form in Christ, the son of David. In order to take in how final that final form is, Christians need to leave themselves into the story of David. Essentially what he is saying is that the David that we read in this narrative is God's David. David isn't David apart from God. And it, and it is a story that comes in the final form in Christ. The fulfilling of God in Christ. And in order for us to take in how final that final form is, Christians need to leave themselves into the story of David, essentially meaning that God in David, Christ in us. The David that we see in this narrative is not the human David, but God's David. Likewise, when people see us, do they see us as Christ in us? or us as a person. Spirituality, but earthly spirituality, big over a wall, Eugene H. Peterson. Knowing Christ through David. Incidentally, the theme for our church this year is also knowing Christ. So through this passage, we will try to draw a parallel between David and Christ and how this applies to our life. We will look at three points. First, David anointed king over all Israel. And this is based on kingship, leadership, and divine kingship. We see the turning point in David's life. Second point is David defeated the Jebusite stronghold. 
the blind and the lame, and the lame. He was being tufted. So there is a defeating of strongholds. And three, David rebuilt Jerusalem and its walls. David became more and more powerful. There is the rebuilding in our life. So the three key points that we would look at is turning point in our life, strongholds in our life, and rebuilding of our life. The kingship of David and Christ shows very much similarities as we shall see. Let us now look back into the narrative story. All the tribes of Israel came to David at Hebron and said, We are your own flesh and blood. In the past, our Saul was king over us. You were the one who led Israel on their military campaigns. And the Lord said to you, You will shepherd my people, Israel, and you will become their ruler. When all the elders of Israel had come to King David at Hebron, the king made a covenant with them at Hebron before the Lord, and anointed David king over Israel. David was 30 years old when he became king, and he reigned 40 years. In Hebron, he reigned over Judah seven years and six months, and in Jerusalem, he reigned over all Israel and Judah 33 years. So from King David being only king of Judah, now he was anointed to be king over whole of Israel. And this happened in Hebron. So we will look at a chart of the house of David. As we know, David is a son of Jesse. And from David, son came Solomon and from Solomon he go to Rehoboam and from there he leads on to Jesus Christ son of David son of God okay the other point I would like you to note is among JC one of the daughter is Sura and one of his son is jo Joab which is the commander of David's army. So Joab is the nephew of David. We will see later the relationship. Point number one, David anointed king over all Israel. So the basis for the elders coming to anoint King David is because he is their kinship. According to them, he is their own flesh and blood. From the genealogy, he is from Jesse. Then the other point was leadership. David was the one who led Israel. Despite Saul was the king, but all the wars was won by David. And three, divine kingship. They know that it is God who has anointed David early on, even when he was young, before he even had killed Goliath. That in the passage we read, he is to shepherd my people, become their ruler. So likewise for Christ, we read in John 1.14, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. So there is a king kinship with us humans humanity what about leadership in john 10 11 the word says he is a true shepherd not a hireling he will protect us and divine kingship in isaiah 9 to 6 the words read the government shall be upon his shoulder. He is the Prince of Peace. So, like David, Jesus Christ has all the reasons and all the criteria 
for us to anoint him as our king because he is related to us in kinship he, he is our leader and he is the he has a divine kingship verse number six the king and his men marched to jerusalem to attack the jebusites who live there the jebusites said to david you will not get in here even the blind and the name can walk you off they thought david cannot get in here nevertheless david captured the fortress of zion which is the city of david so why does david want to move to jerusalem and to capture jerusalem or jebus which is what it was called during that time david's main reason was political because as we know the northern tribes their capital is samaria while for the southern tribes is Hebron. So David wanted to move his uh, headquarters of his base to a more central position that is Jerusalem. And Jerusalem is situated at the border of the territory of Judah and Benjamin. Okay. So we also know that, that the Jebusites know that it is not so easy to defeat them in Jerusalem. What is the reason why they are so confident? If we were to look at a topography of Jerusalem, okay, we will know that it is situated on a foundation of solid rock and is bound by the west and the east by the central valley and the Kildron valley so they, there is two very deep ravine both east and west and they meet at the south southern part so the only way to reach Jerusalem or to conquer Jerusalem is only through the northern part okay so it is not so easy to conquer Jerusalem. So what the only way, what is the only way then? Okay. The, the scripture text continued. Verse 8. On that day, David had said, anyone who conquers the Jebusites will have to use the water shaft to reach those lame and blind who are David's enemies. That is why they say, the blind in name will not enter the palace. In the parallel passage in 1 Chronicles 11 verse 6, he says, David had said, whoever leads the attack on the Jebusites will become commander-in-chief. Joab, son of Zeruah, went up first, and so he received the command. Is we need to know that the water supply to Jerusalem and the surrounding area is through underground water through springs okay and we are well aware of the Gihon spring okay and there are a network of subterrain waterways as we can see in the diagram and one of the shafts as mentioned in the bible in the scripture text just now was orange shaft okay so the current understanding in the commentary is that somehow the they went through this shaft and that's how they're able to conquer jerusalem okay. So they actually defeated the Jebusite stronghold. 
So this is another picture of the waterways. Jebusite arrogance, stronghold. But the tribe of Judah could not drive out the Jebusites who live in the city of Jerusalem. So the Jebusites live there among the people of Judah to this day. So this is Joshua chapter 15, 63. So at, in chapter, Joshua chapter 15, it tells of the uh, land, division of the land to the tribe of Judah. And at the end of that passage, he reads that the tribe of Judah could not drive out the Jebusites. So from the time of Joshua to presently King David, it would probably be about 400 years. So there is an entrenchment over time. Okay. The Jebusite says, you will not get in here. Even the blind and the lame can wipe you off. So they talked to David that uh, despite David's name and being such a conqueror, yet they say that even the blind and the lame can take on you and that you will not be able to come into Jebus or Jerusalem. Nevertheless, David captured the fortress of Zion, which is the city of David. So after David captured Zion, he called it the city of David. This is why they say the blind and the lame will not enter the palace. So the Jebusites will be wiped out and they will not be able to be in the palace. Okay? Just some uh, about the blind and the lame. Okay. There is this uh, rabbinic story or myth. He says that the Jebusites had two statues in their city with their mouths containing the words of the covenant between Abraham and the Jebusites. One figure depicting a blind person representing Isaac and the other depicting a lame person representing Jacob. So because of this, there seems to be a treaty between Abraham and the Jebusite people long ago. So they believe that because of that, they would not want to conquer them or would not be able to conquer them because of this uh, covenant. So what makes a stronghold? Right? So you can see that strongholds don't occur overnight. It takes a long time. Okay? Things which are in your life and slowly it continue to grow on you and it makes it become a stronghold for you. After a long time, it becomes an extended belief, entrenched belief. And they start to believe that it's in, they are invincible, that nothing can conquer them. Okay. Jebusite stronghold was defeated by David. If we continue to read on the scripture in 1 Kings 9, 20 to 21, it tells us that there were still people left from the Amorites, Hittites, Parasites, Hittites, and Jebusites. These people were not Israelites. Solomon constricted the descendants of all these people within the land, whom the Israelites could not exterminate to serve as slave labor as it is to this day. So finally, the Jebusites became the slave during Solomon's time. So that's why the saying, the blind and the lame will not enter the palace. They would not occupy Jebus or Jerusalem anymore. What about man's arrogance and our stronghold? 
John 1.11 says, He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Referring to Jesus, word become flesh. For although they knew God, they neither glorified him as God, nor gave thanks to him, but their thinking became futile, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Romans 1.21 This description refers to those idol worshippers, people who are attracted to the world, to their own ideas, to their own thinking. And in Romans 2.5, is also said, but because of your stubbornness and your unrepentant heart, you are storing up wrath against yourself. For the day of God's wrath, when his righteous judgment will be revealed. So this refers to actually the Pharisees or to those people who are self-righteous, who believe that they are right and they and that they are not sinful. So this is man's or arrogant, just like the Jebusite who believe that David cannot come in. And so we tell Jesus that you cannot come in. Okay. But man's stronghold was defeated Romans 3.24 says, Yet God in His grace freely makes us right in His sight. He did this through Christ Jesus and He freed us from the penalty for our sins. And John 1 child, But to all who believed Him and accepted Him, He gave the right to become children of God. So Jesus defeated our stronghold. And he's knocking at our door. He, he will come in and make his home with us. When Christ captures the citator of our view, as David captures Zion, our old self is subdued. Christ reigns in our heart and begins to work wonders in our life. When Christ captures the citator of our view, as David captured Zion, our old self is subdued. What does it mean to be yielded to Christ? Let's move on with the scripture. Verse 9. David then took up residence in the fortress and called in the city of and called it the city of David. He built up the area around it from the terraces inward. And the parallel passage in 1 Chronicles 11 says, He built up the city around it from the terraces to the surrounding wall, while Joab restored the rest of the city. So it's both Joab, David's nephew, and David. Okay, So it's just like Jesus and the Holy Spirit. So David rebuilt Jerusalem and his walls. And we know how important the walls are when the Jerusalem walls were broken in Nehemiah's time. Okay. Walls protect, keep enemies away. And likewise also in the Bible we hear that when the fences of the vineyard is broken, the foxes will come and consume the great trees. Restore, build up David and Joab. So what are the things or conditions in our life where the work of Christ and the Holy Spirit is evident? Fear become boldness. 
pride become meekness. Envy become kindness. Hatred become love. Doubt become trust. Lust become restraint. Anxiety become calm. When Christ reigns in our heart, He begins to work wonders in our life. What are some of the work Christ through the Holy Spirit had done in your life? And finally, verse 10. And he, David, became more and more powerful because the Lord God Almighty was with him. So when Jesus comes into our life, he will break our strongholds if we yield to him. What are some strongholds they are still struggling with currently? And he will rebuild our walls. He will help us. He will transform our life. So let us yield to him, just as David was in God. And God and David become more and more powerful because the Lord God Almighty was with him. So from political time, okay, from being the city of Jebus, Jebus meaning being trodden, it became Jerusalem, city of peace. He went on to have to spiritual time, as we know later on, he brought the Ark of the Covenant back to Israel. And finally, military tribes, all the surrounding nations. He was able to conquer and there was rest from the enemies. Likewise for us, today, I hope the message will speak to you that it is a new chapter in your life is a turning point and you need to surrender your stronghold. Let Jesus come in to capture the stronghold, just being yielded to him and he will rebuild, he will restore whatever you have lost, whatever that you are having difficulty with. And now finally, conclusion. David became more and more. Are you becoming more and more? As David became more and more because the Lord God Almighty was with him. So I pray that we will become more and more as we you more and more to Jesus and the Holy Spirit who continue to work in us, to rebuild us, to restore us, so that we will continue to have triumphs in our life. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for your prophet prophetic word, words that today is a turning point, it's a new chapter in the life of my brothers and sisters. And Lord, that you have sent your son to conquer the strongholds, the strongholds in the life, things which are holding them back, things which they are not able to surrender. Lord. That Jesus is able to do a new work in their life, that there will be restoration, they will be rebuilding of the walls that they that it will not be broken that nobody can come in that you will want to snatch away to destroy but indeed lord you become stronger in you lord. you become more and more more and more blessed more and more like your son more and more able to minister to people. 
that you have given to us. Lord, we just want to thank you again for your spiritual and prophetic work from this narrative on King David and the life of us, of Christ in us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So we want to uh, thank Dr. Choi for sharing God's word with us uh, and for the encouragement through the life of David, paralleling the life of Jesus, uh, challenging us and also encouraging us uh, to look to Jesus. That may this time be a turning point in our lives where we allow Jesus to break down our strongholds and grow stronger, even in this uh, difficult time of uh, EMCO. Uh, where we all have to stay at home, I believe that God will strengthen you through his word, through prayer, and through the fellowship of believers. And it's, I'm so glad that I see down here 25 people, uh, 25 uh, people, more than 25 people, like 25 on the equipment, uh, that uh, computers, some of you are sharing. And then I don't know how many is on YouTube. Kwe, 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 I think can see how many on YouTube. Uh, 16. Okay, there are over 40 of us. So now we'll invite Pastor uh, to uh, close with the benediction. Yeah, I would really appreciate and uh, I'm also thankful to Dr. Choi for blessing us with this uh, very unique, interesting and uh, scholarly sermon and edifying sermon. Uh. He used a very uh, unique approach, we call it the biblical theology way reading Christ, reading the gospel from the Old Testament text. Uh, that is very uh, difficult to do. Uh, we rarely do that. Uh, uh, so actually, uh, it's quite a reformed way of doing this. Uh, and also my research in this area. And I really believe that, brothers and sisters, we, we are called to God's kingdom to be his children with a purpose that we become more. Amen? We become more and more in the sense that increase in our faith, increase in our service to the Lord, and an increase in everywhere, huh? everything. I think God will also bring down the break down the stronghold of this pandemic. Uh, not only our our kind of, uh, disposition, but God will break down everything because this is will that is call us to be children, that is to grow and become more. Amen. Can you put a thumbs up? So thank you, Dr. Choi. Uh, I think uh, he showed us a great way of uh, doing some and hope that we can, in days to come, we will go into this direction too. Uh. Congregation received uh, God's, God's blessing from above. Amen. Go forth and be faithful in a little that you may also be found faithful in much. Go to be faithful in much that you may be entrusted with the wealth and welfare of others. Go to be faithful with the wealth of this generation that you may be given the true riches that come from above. Go to be faithful children of light that you may know the grace, hope, and peace of the one who is truly faithful. Amen. Amen. Thank you, my sisters, for your participation in this uh, online worship through YouTube and Zoom. May God's protection continue to be upon you and your loved ones. Uh, so see you next Sunday. Please uh, do not miss the worship online. See you next Sunday. God bless you. Now, all of you can unmute yourself and please do not leave so fast. We have a time of fellowship. Please unmute yourself. God bless you. Yeah, you can, you can still stay back and uh, talk to one another. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Today I like Dr. Choi's way uh, of doing. So Dr. Choi, you practice, you uh, you apply oh. and learn from biblical theology. <laughs> no la, this one inspiration from your book ah. Uh. You think it doesn't? You didn't finish yet. You better finish. You think it doesn't work? Ah, yeah la, You are doing how way ah. Uh, but you think it is more on the spiritual part la. Uh. You do a lot of technical things. I think we did. Ah, okay. You're not spiritual, ma. Like your bishop say, ma. So we need to move spiritual. Waiting for you, ma. <laughs> There's a good book for 
think I recommended to many of you, uh, Eugene Peterson book. I, I read the book, very touched me, you know. <laughs> this, this one you mean? Huh? I recommend one book only. Oh. You look at who's on the line more. Yeah, most of his books, I think, not so easy to read. Huh? Yeah. Mm. But that, I like your approach. Is that one is a, is a very unique way now we are learning. Huh? Uh, especially the non reform pastor we are learning mm -hmm. how to read Christ even from Old Testament text. Become, so our sermon based on Old Testament text, uh, if, despite that, will become gospel centric and uh, crystal centric. Mm. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Dr. Uh, Choi. Yeah, more, yeah. Uh, Pastor Pinche. I really like to do yeah. that. Uh, more. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, doing more and more. You are more and more. See, you are more and more healthy. <laughs> Cannot come up more healthy. Thanks a lot. More and more, we grow in the sideways. <laughs> yes, yes. So, Li Fan, you're still in uh, Germany. Yes. Wow, Germany, yeah. Uh. Very uh -huh. safe, huh? <laughs> <laughs> very, very safe, very safe. Hey, you European countries going up, uh. It's okay. Inter we are well protected. <laughs> yeah, yeah there's a the castle there. there. <laughs> there's a there. Oh, I'm going to say it's background now. <laughs> Why? Yeah, they, yeah, they, they, they got a sit wall city. Um, today we don't see Chong Sui Yin, no? Sister Chong Sui Yin. Oh, yeah, yeah. She, she ah, did try yeah. us. Yeah. Who there? Maybe on YouTube. We best to let you see. Who was speaking Mandarin? <laughs> no, I was talking to Sui. Oh. Oh. Sui is something. I, I was expecting Dr. Choi to illustrate on the 30 years plus 40 years of Davis, no? First 30 years. Uh, no. How it applied to Jesus' life. Yeah, la, Jesus will start at 30 age, ma. Yeah, then how about the 40 years? 40 years, you tell la. 40 years <laughs> is, is eternity. La. Make Christ will reign forever. 40 years is a perfect number in Old Testament. Uh, Oh, correct, oh. huh? Correct. So we apply in Jesus' life is he will sit on the throne forever. Yeah, nah. Too yeah. many because points cannot cannot all bring in. Uh. Yeah, nah. yeah. Good. Uh, uh, a lot for us to digest already. Very yeah. good. Mm. So Dr. Choi, you please email your full script to me. <laughs> no, <laughs> la, I got no script one. That is the PowerPoint, the script law. I told you before. <laughs> From the script. I'm not right script already, so sir. You got no full script, ah? Wow, no he, he, PowerPoint is my script, lah. Huh? Wow, wow, he's, he's a real teacher, lah. Like like all the teachers, no script, ah. <laughs> no <laughs> lah, it, it, it very the slow. Outline. On mood. <laughs> it's all in his head already. <laughs> yeah, what, all in his head already. Inspiration so, of the Holy Spirit. Ah. Uh, no, only so the Holy only, Spirit bring to mind. Only what is written is correct. So if there's any query, oh. only the written part, oh. the speaking part is not <laughs> is not uh, foolproof. So next time if you preach again, uh, you use the same strategy, no? Typical theology way. Cannot la uh, depend on the, the, the topic and the leading la. Uh. A lot of works to do, huh? a lot of research to do. No? You, do you can it. see you know, he has done a lot of research. Yeah, a lot of research. And a lot of reflection on, on, uh, on his own. Hey, your, your Jerusalem, the, this tunnel, uh, water, actually, I don't know. No? Even pastor also, I don't know. Thank you. No. Uh, the topology. Eh? No, that one, the commentary will tell you. Uh. Archaeology I mean, commentary will tell you. Uh. Yeah, but I didn't read that part. Uh. Pastor, you need uh, to go to the Holy Land. Uh, I think I think most of us we do not have that uh, the lame and the blind this story uh. <laughs> mm. Mm. yeah the, the the blind is I um uh, but Isaac and the lame is 
Jacob. Jacob. Wow, very good. Uh. Jacob Russell, uh. we got no ma. He's lost. Uh, he lost his uh, heat ma. You mean the Jebu side say that even the limb in the mind can defend the attack from outside, is it? What do you mm. say? Just... Can ward off the enemies. Yeah, but the enemies can defend the enemy because of the, the, the area that way. Uh, the fortress so yeah. strong. Good now, you draw out that point very clearly, Dr. Chai. It means something mm. like the uh, Edomite, la, the Petra, no? Uh, yeah, la. like the Edomite. Yeah. Actually, today, uh, you still can see the tunnel of uh, Hezekiah, you know? Uh, yeah, lah. There's subsequent is the Hezekiah tunnel, lah. They dig one more. Uh, la. They built it. Uh, because of the story. The water shaft. Water shaft. That, that, that picture you show, lah. Is it the one of 